Good morning, guys. Welcome to reading class. Topic for today, fiction and nonfiction. Can, your, can you share events from the story? The storm that can happen in real life? Yes. A what, tornado. What kinds of um what kind of events? Something that happened in the story that could really happen in our life or in real life. Yes. Okay, Jose Enrique. I have one. Yes, I have a, I have a, a an event. Tell me. That a tornado happened. Uh huh. A tornado, definitely. A storm. A tornado. It's something that yeah, occurs I mean. in real life. No. What else that happened in the story could happen in real life? What else? The tornado is one thing that could happen in, in of course, in real life. How what else? A car accident. A car accident. So the disability Jonathan has, right? That condition, yes, Jonathan in physically challenged child can face a storm alone. Mm. But the accident that also you mentioned that led him in a wheelchair. What else that happened in the story? Hello, Isabella. You miss the first class. What else? Two classes, actually. What else, guys? That happened in the story. That's 24 classes. What else? You, what has happened in the story? Remember me? A storm, Jonathan was alone in the house. What else happened? that died in the end okay yes animals die what did that night the tornado do destroy houses destroy many things uh-huh farm horses and other animals can be damaged for a storm yes so this one it's an imaginary story yes is an imaginary story, but the setting, characters, and events are realistic. Realistic means that could be real. Could be real, okay? Realistic fiction, realistic fiction is a made up story. Made up means invented. That involves characters, settings, and problems that are realistic. That events or problems that could really happen in our life, in daily life. Now, the storm is a good example of realistic fiction. Is a good example. Because tornadoes, tornadoes can occur um, during the year and also destroy and kill animals and everything we saw in this in this story. Now let's read this this story, Tornado Tales. The power of a tornado can produce some strange effects. Stocks of straw have been driven into a telegraph pole. Planks of wood shot through a bar door in a playing car and bended on its edge more than an inch into a wooden door. Bark has been stripped, striped from trees and feathers plunked from chicken. The amount of feather lost by chicken was once suggested as a way of estimating the strength of a tornado winds. So imagine the feathers the lost feathers in the chicken. It's um suggested. It's a, a suggestion. The way uh, the to show the strength of the tornado. Have you ever take of a, a feather of a bird? Alguna vez usted le han arrancado una pluma a un pájaro o una pluma a una gallina? Oh. 
Yes, miss. Mira. You need to pull really hard. Para quitarle una pluma a una gallina, you need to pull really hard. So this one shows you how strong that tornado is, the winds of that tornado. Trains have been lifted, turned around, and dropped onto the track facing the other way. Yeah, it's pretty strong. In order to lift, para levantar those heavy objects. Trains have been lifted, turned around, and dropped onto the track facing the other way. Facing, so it means that the, the truck, for example, I got something that I built for my son here. It's here. And then it's like this, facing the other way. So that's what happened to, to objects during a tornado. Heavy refrigerator have been carried hundreds of yards while lighter objects have been carried for tens of miles. Freak, freak falls. A tornado passing over a pond or river can suck up the contents like a huge vacuum cleaner. So the tornado soak, um, absorbe el agua like a vacuum, como una aspiradora, eh, from the water from ponds or rivers. Hundreds of small frogs, toads, tadpoles, fish, and weeds may be carried along for many miles until the tornado weakens and the objects falls to the ground or are flung to the side, or son lanzados a algún lado. That could happen. Now look at here, a nine, a nine years old, nine years old girl living on a farm in England in 1932 suffered the strange effects of one tornado. She was out walking when a storm broke, rain fell, but it fell soft and heavy. She shook her head and tiny frogs dropped on, dropped to the ground. Her dog went berserk as frogs fell and tangled in its hair. Cows stamped, stamped, stampeded. Cows stampeded and then, and that ter terrified girl ran home to her parents. They never believed her story. Sometimes the tornado or water spout that cause the freak holes its seams. Often, however, eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses is a person that observes something. I saw, for example, a car passing in front of my house. I was a witness of that because I saw it. Often, however, eyewitnesses are left baffled. In the past, these strange falls were, were thought to be sites that something bad would happen. So imagine that the little girl, um, well, people didn't believe what she said. In the path of a tornado, being caught in a tornado can be very scary, but most people survive, especially if they take shelter. In 1995, a baby boy was plucked from his coat and carried away from his destroyed home in desk Arkansas by a tornado. He was found safe in a ditch half a mile away. Encontrado el bebé a sal. Where? En un canal. A half mile away. Moody and with just a few scratches and bruises. Scratches son como rasguños. And bruises son como raspones. In 1992, a young girl escaped unhurt after being carried almost two miles from, from a tornado near Shanghai in China. She was set down in a treetop. She was on a treetop, in, a, in el top de un árbol, arriba. Trying to flee from a tornado in a car is not a good idea. A tornado is too fast, and the direction it travels in is too unpredictable for drivers to know where to go to avoid it. See, so a tornado can go straight, but then can make a curve. So that's why it's not um, the most appropriate idea. Try to escape inside a car because the car can fly in the air easily. 
So it's better to find a shelter. It's better to find a shelter. This was made clear when a tornado was 200 meters per hour. This is what it means, 200 meters per hour. Winds struck Wichita Falls in Texas in 1979. As it approached to the city, some people jumped into their cars and tried to flee the tornado by driving away from it. However, 26 out of the 43 people killed and 30 out of the 59 people with serious injuries were in cars. Most of the victims' homes were left undamaged by the tornado powerful wind. So it's not so um, appropriate to escape in cars. Look at this map. Daniel, oh, Daniel went to the bathroom. Uh, look at this map. Tornadoes occur so often in the Midwest, see this in this region, in the Midwest, that it, it is known as Tornado Alley. Typically, there are 1,000 tornadoes in the United States. have a question. Each year, yeah? They can be tornadoes seen in the rest. No, not the same um, size as in the United States. The disadvantage of the United States is that it has flat areas, huge amount of lands with flat area. But in Honduras, we have a mountainous region. We have a mountainous territory. And the tornado needs flat area. United States has grasslands, has a plains, valleys, that are big in, in amount, okay? And that's why the United States has at least, says here, an average of 1,000 tornadoes every year. That's what it says here. Tornadoes occur in all the parts of the world, including the United question. Kingdom, yeah? I have a question. In the United States, is the only state has tornadoes or other bodies have tornadoes? Well, the tornadoes occur, see, in all of these part of the country. And here it says average oh, numbers of tornadoes. Oh, yeah, tornado. look, look, average number of tornadoes per 10,000 per month. In that map? This where one? Is Texas? This one? Now I'm scared because because imagine that I'm going I'm going to United you're going to United States and then you saw you see a tornado. That that the also bug is hard. Look at this. This one says one, three, five, seven, nine. So this one, the darkest part, has more tornadoes oh, the, than the rest. Uh, than the rest. See that this one. This. Red spots here, the darker spots here, okay? Has tornadoes, has where, nine tornadoes maybe? So over here it says um, in 1989, the worst, worst tornadoes disaster killed 1,300 people in Bangladesh. Now this is the word you have to copy. Oh, we are almost in the chart, you have to copy. Expository nonfiction. Non-fiction, it means real. A book that gives facts about a topic and explains about something in real life. An encyclopedia, for example, is an, is an, an expository non-fiction book. The Bible, maybe, is a non-fiction, considered non-fiction. So Tornado Tales is a good example of expository non-fiction. This is the word you have to copy. Draw the chart. Please, you can draw a letter, uh, like a T here and again, like a, like a letter T. Yeah, but more, more, fat. The storm rea is realistic fiction. Tells about imaginary people, places, and the events. Is realistic fat. Everything, fiction. copy, copy the chart. Mm -hmm. The storm tells about imaginary people, Places 
and events that are like those in real life. Main purpose usually is to entertain. And the Tornado Tales is, a non, is an expository nonfiction, tells about something in the real world. And the main purpose is to explain. Okay, so this is the work you have to copy in this class. Remember that in reading, you have no homework this week. Thank you for your attention, guys.